Trump's press office. Yeah. No, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to the last week at the press office.
Good afternoon. Thank you for your patience as you've waited for us. I'm Keir Pritchard, the Chief Constable for Wiltshire Police. I'm joined by the Police and Crime Commissioner, Angus McPherson. Okay. This is the news we hoped would never come. It's with great sadness that we learned yesterday of the tragic death of 44-year-old Dawn Sturgis, as reported by Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu and the Prime Minister. As a force, we are all in complete shock and on behalf of all officers, staff and volunteers working here at Wiltshire Police, I wish to pass our sincere condolences to Dawn's children, her wider family and her friends at this terrible time. I cannot begin to imagine the pain and suffering that they must be feeling, coupled with the questions that they are seeking answers to. I know that Dawn's family have asked for privacy from the media and I would hope that you respect those wishes. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are also with Dawn's partner, Chris Rowley, as well as his friends and his family. He, of course, remains in a critical condition in Salisbury District Hospital. As confirmed earlier today by the Counterterrorism Policing Network, we now know that Dawn's death is being treated as murder. I know this news will affect more people than just those who knew Dawn. In addition to her family and her friends, 
I appreciate it is highly likely that this will send a huge shockwave across our communities here in Wiltshire. Of course, the safety of our public remains of paramount importance to me and all of the agencies involved in this incident. I know the public will be deeply worried and equally, as a resident of Wiltshire, I share and fully understand these concerns. I would, however, like to remind our communities that this tragic development has not changed the Public Health England advice that's been provided by the Chief Medical Officer. This advice is that the risk to the wider public remains low. Please be assured this is being kept under constant review as further information comes to light. We continue to provide support to the ongoing investigation as well as coordinating the multi-agency local response. The investigation team will work tirelessly to establish the sequence of events. I would urge anyone who has any questions following yesterday's tragic and sad news to speak to one of our many officers in the community. If they cannot answer your questions, I'm sure they will be able to put you in touch with an organisation who will be able to. As you know, last week we very quickly established a public advice helpline which continues to operate. To date, this line is taken in excess of 350 calls. And a reminder for you, the numbers for you to call are 0800 0920 410 or 0207 158 0124. These are staffed by both police and colleagues from Public Health England. Throughout this period, and in order to provide ongoing reassurance, we will continue to provide a highly visible policing presence in the local areas. Today, officers on the ground will be joined by members of Public Health England in order to provide direct advice to anyone concerned. Again, please do approach us with any questions you may have. So I'd also like to take this opportunity to repeat a number of points made earlier by Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu, which include, the investigation team are currently unable to say at this moment whether the nerve agent found in this incident is linked to the attack on Yulia and Sergei Skripal, but this of course remains the main line of inquiry. The investigation team, with our support, continue to work tirelessly to find out who is responsible for this shocking and barbaric crime. Counterterrorism police are keen to hear from anyone who may have any information, so please contact them by calling 0800 789 321. We of course will keep you updated as regularly as we can, so please also check the Wiltshire Police website for the most up-to-date information. So finally, I'd like to finish by talking about the continual strength and resilience I have seen from local residents and businesses here in Amesbury and Salisbury. Since news broke of the major incident, I've spent considerable time in the areas most affected. And whilst people have expressed some concerns to me, I'm full of admiration for their continued support, patience and understanding during these challenging times. Whilst this remains an extraordinary time for Wiltshire, I have every confidence that the communities have the strength to pull through this highly difficult period with the support of partners. Thank you. I'm Angus McPherson, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Wiltshire and Swindon. Foremost in my thoughts today are the family and friends of Dawn Sturgis at this terribly sad and difficult time. I send my condolences to them as they attempt to come to terms with what has happened over the last few days. My thoughts are also with Dawn's partner, Charlie Rowley, who remains critically ill in hospital. Miss Sturgis was an innocent member of the public who should have been able to go about her daily life without becoming a victim in such an unprecedented and international incident. I am horrified and appalled that an illegal and lethal nerve agent has been used on the streets of our county. And whilst the city of Salisbury has bounced back so resiliently, it saddens me that Miss Sturgis and now her family are bearing the devastating impacts of this incident. 
Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu announced today that they are unable to say at this moment that the nerve agent found in this incident is linked to the attack on the Skripals. However, this remains, as you've heard, the main line of inquiry. Counter-terrorism officers involved in this ongoing police investigation are doing all they can to find the source of the contamination and to find who is responsible. And they are supported in this by Wiltshire Police. Although I understand the sense of anxiety that's felt amongst our communities, it is very important to reiterate the advice from Public Health England, based on the current best evidence that the risk to the general public as a result of the incident remains low. Thank you. Sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, I understand that uh, the counter-terrorism network are trying to establish the movements of both Charlie and of Dawn. And of course, as they piece together the, the movements on Saturday, um, they are establishing every movement. So, of course, th that information will remain with the counter-terrorism network. Keir, you took at BBC News. The public were told the risk was low last time, and now a woman is dead. What happens if the item isn't found in either property? There's a real risk they've discarded it somewhere, and it's still out in Salisbury. It's a real concern for us all. We've heard AC Neil Basu talk today um, about the risk to the public. We can see the information that's being provided within the public health website. That is the very best information that we're able to work on. So our role here at Wiltshire Police is to listen to the information that we're being provided by the Counter-Terrorism Network and to sensibly guard and secure those locations that are provided to us from the Counter-Terrorism Network such that we can protect those from the, from the public entering into them and that we can enable the Counter-Terrorism Network to carry out a meticulous and detailed search. But what we would you say to people who might claim that the Wiltshire Police has somehow failed to keep the public safe? Uh, I understand that concern. This is tragic news and the news that none of us expected and none of us wanted. Of course, they are key questions that will need to be asked. What I can say is that we, responding again to the information that we were given back in March, have been really careful in securing a number of key locations across Salisbury. And we've heard today that there is no suggestion that any contaminant exposure has come from any of those sites that have previously been secured and are currently in the process of being decontaminated through the recovery cell. The 21 people who presented themselves, as Commander Basu uh, suggested, do they include the three people who are in the van with Charlie? Do you know? Uh, what I can say is out of the 21 people, uh, there are eight of those who are from the policing community, um, uh, the others are from the health community and from the uh, paramedic community that have helped with the initial response. What I can say out of everybody that has presented, there is nobody with any ongoing health concerns. The screening testing has all proved to be negative and there are no further requirements for any of those individuals to return to hospital. Kia, can you say if those locations that you have secured now include the bus that they've travelled off? And if so, we spoke to people who don't know what bus it was, that bus has been very much sold to people since Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, when that bus is so, uh, of course, the, the bus, which has subsequently become a line of inquiry for the counter-terrorism network, is an important aspect for us to understand the potential risks that may be faced. Um, of course, that forms a key line of inquiry with our colleagues at the counter-terrorism network. So, could people of Salisbury want to know if they were on the bus? What bus was it? What? Um, uh, I don't have that information to provide. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have that information, but again, the, the helpline that I've provided, if there are people who have concerns, I would encourage you to use the 0800 helpline number that we have here. And where's that bus now? Again, I don't have that information, sorry. But yeah. potentially, we're weeks down the road, perhaps, when every item within Charlie's property and Dawn's property has been tested by Porton Down, and potentially that item won't still be identified. And, and clearly there's huge concern, as you can imagine in Amesbury and elsewhere, that there is an item still out in the open, regardless of whether it's behind a cordon or not, but in the open within those two locations, which, which the police clearly don't have any clue what it is. Indeed. I, I fully understand the concerns in the public, and again, it's unprecedented. I'd like to reassure the public as best I can that we are operating very closely with our colleagues at the Counterterrorism Network. We are securing the locations that are being provided to us such that we can provide that ongoing public safety. 
Um, what we need to do is allow space for the detailed, meticulous and highly complex investigation to continue, which will of course involve the meticulous searching of a number of the key locations that we are controlling on behalf of the counter-terrorism network. I do obviously recognise the concerns within the public. Okay, what, what difference would it have made if Dawn Sturge's condition was treated as a suspected nerve agent exposure from the outset, do you think? Well, it's with such sadness that we are here today shocked deeply concerned that uh, a member of our public in Wiltshire has, has died um, in relation to this latest major incident. Uh, I know that um, staff from across the first responders responded to the incident on Saturday um, and of course she was very quickly taken to the world uh, renowned NHS that we have seen so successfully help many people in Salisbury so she was very quickly returned to the place where that medical help could be provided. Is there one final question yeah, ladies and gents? Check. I've got on the 21 figure that you gave, all of those emergency services personnel, police, paramedics and the staff? The 21 is made up of uh, eight police officers and police staff, uh, a paramedic, the rest are health and, and five members of public. Sorry, three members of public. Just just two points of, they involve children? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Just two points, two points of fact. Two points of fact. Have you, to your knowledge, found anything that might be the vial or syringe or whatever the container is with the, the chemical in? And has anyone been aware of that? Uh, what I can say is that forms a very clear part of the counterterrorism investigation. Of course, their key line of inquiry is to establish the circumstances that led to the tragedy that we are here facing today. And as soon as they have information in relation to either the container or item, I'm sure that information will be provi Finally, provided to the other, public. How many other forces are currently helping Wiltshire Police? And is there any anticipation the Army will become involved again? Um, final question, ladies and gents, because then I need to go to the scenes myself again today and into Salisbury and Amesbury. It's really important that we maintain the, the high-class policing that we provide to all of our communities across Wiltshire and Swindon and our daily business which is um, significant throughout, throughout the summer period is obviously of critical importance to me. I have been able to call upon the support of colleagues around the country. We have seen and it's been a pleasure to welcome colleagues from the South West, from the Welsh forces and from the Northern forces helping us throughout this period of time. So what I can say is we are receiving support. Um, we don't know how long that support will be now um, required to stay with Wiltshire 4, but part of that is to enable us to continue to provide policing across the rest of Wiltshire. So how many Ladies and gents, thank you. The Army obviously didn't ask that, answer that question. Do you anticipate the Army becoming involved? I, I think we keep our, our options open. Ladies and gents, thank you. Sorry? Yes, of course. Um, so our th the final comment I'd like to make is that our thoughts and prayers are also with the family and friends of Charlie Rowley. Um, Charlie remains in a critical condition in Salisbury District Hospital and it's vital that our thoughts are, are with Charlie as well as Dawn's family and Dawn's children. Thank you. Microphones this sure. level. You stick yours up right here and it's in the bloody way. Okay. You know, I asked you once to get out of the way, it, it creeps up sure. and you've ruined the top of all that stuff. Okay? So I'm going to tell your cup to get a decent microphone or drop it we down lower. Alright, I don't have you will get one. It's just advertising, I was like a disaster, isn't it? Like you're trying to advertise. Your yeah, company. it looks as if you're here, the only person here is you. It's a bit of distasteful. I don't care, you don't think I'm going to say that.